Let's talk about an extraordinary new statistic that's come out uh, from the HFEA. They're the Human Fertilization and Embryo uh, Embryology Authority. They keep uh, an abreast of uh, uh, all sort of IVF and fertility work in the country and uh, what's safe, what's not, what works, what doesn't, and how many people are actually using it. Uh, and they've come up with an amazing statistic. Nearly 21,000 babies were born after IVF fertility treatment in 2023, the last year of which we've got full data. That means that in an average class of 30 kids, Kids, one child in every British class is born as a result of IVF treatment. So, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, let's talk about this with uh, Dr. Hippocrates Cyrus. He's a consultant in rep reproductive medicine and the director of King's Fertility. A very good morning to you. Good morning to you too. Thank you for having. Thanks for joining me. us. Um, so, is this a is this a statistic we should welcome or be worried about? Well, I wouldn't worry about it. About one in six couples uh, struggle to conceive, and for many, IVF can be a life-changing uh, option. Of course, it's important to understand that it's not a guarantee, and especially as success declines with age. However, just to give you even more uh, startling statistic, although we say that in the UK, now 3.1% of all babies born are born through IVF. Actually, this is quite low compared to some of European counterparts. So in Denmark, it's 11%. That's about one in 10 babies. Wow. In Belgium, it's 5% as well. So unless obviously we assume that for some reason, you know, uh, women in Denmark have more fertility problems, yeah. uh, actually it just shows that there is a gap between what is the real need and actually what is occurring well, and happening as in someone the UK. Who, so it who, sounds a lot. No, exactly. Well, as someone who did IVF and my early 40s when you've got a very low chance of, uh, of, of having a baby from that after I'd had my daughter naturally um, I did three rounds all failed I, I came to terms that had to splash a hell of a lot of cash to get that um, wasn't eligible on the NHS uh, and many women many couples can't get um, uh, uh, NHS uh, uh, help so we, we know there's much bigger age demand but isn't the issue here that actually when you say one in six couples struggle to conceive the main reason most couples don't uh, aren't able to conceive naturally is because both the woman and the man actually are too old and that we've got a massive issue in this country where young women are, are and I know so many young women, I'm, I'm evangelical on this, are absolutely convinced that they don't even have to think about starting to try and have a baby until their mid-30s when in fact that is probably for many women the last point at which they can have a baby and we need to start having an educational program for men and women I think from childhood onwards to say you need to start having babies sooner if you want to have a family. So you've said many things which are correct there and I'd like to unpick some of it. So you're correct that while IVF is a powerful tool in our fertility treatment arsenal, it should never replace proper family planning or fertility education. And women and men need to be clear uh, and have accurate information about how fertility changes over time mm. and what current treatments can and cannot do. And it's important to say that knowledge is key to making these informed decisions. It's also important to say that the average age uh, of women having children in the UK has steadily gone up over the decades. It's now 31. The average age for having IVF is 35 and above, which obviously is above the sort of natural... Yeah optimal time for conceiving. But it's also important to say, and I think it's a, a, this is quite a, a crucial point with a lot of the policies you were talking before about uh, the social welfare bill and the rest, is that currently in the UK, we have about 1.44 babies born per women, which is below the replacement level of 2.1, yeah. which means we're having fewer younger people yeah. who will be able to look after more and more older people, a smaller tax base. And actually, this is a proper issue that is way beyond just yeah. what yeah. just to say. It's actually a society. Yeah, we, we've covered this many times on the show. It's, it's, it's a crisis in the whole of the, well, the West and indeed the East, isn't it? And unfortunately, it's not just about provision of IVF. Uh, even in countries where, like Denmark, where they have a lot of use of IVF and a lot of it is actually on their national health uh, service, they also have... Um, and in Sweden, very sort of similar sort of declining birth rates. Mm. So it's not just about IVF. It's not just about, uh, you know, simple, uh, possibly simple policies like more uh, paternity and maternity leave like in Sweden. It, it, it's, it, it's much more deep than that. And I think that is something that we all have to come together and oh, think. Oh, yeah, no, there's lots, lots of issues about housing costs, student debts and, and, and people settling down. There are lots of issues there. But the reality is most people want to have family. Most women want to have a family, and a huge number of people are not going to have a family. And they, a lot of them are relying, and I, 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 I just, I know so many women who say, well, I've frozen some eggs, so I'm just going to have a baby when I, 
at my I'm at the peak of my career at 38, 40, or whatever. When the reality is that IVF doesn't actually have the level of success as a rate, a rate of success that a lot of people think it has. So you're absolutely right. So on average, about a third of IVF cycles will be successful. But again, that is an average. So when you look at uh, breaking it down across sort of age groups, yeah. uh, if you're less than 35, that goes up to 40, 40 something percent. But actually, if you're 43 to 44, that is actually 5% and beyond that, with yeah. ONEG, it can actually just approach zero as yeah. well. So although the tool is there, it doesn't mean necessarily works. Yeah. As we just saw, there is a difference between when people come to use IVF, which is over 35, and how successful it is, which is less than 35 as well. Yeah. So there is that sort of mismatch of communication and information that we need to give out there to people so they can make their own informed decisions. Yeah. But but also, I mean, the expense of it. I mean, again, a lot of people, when they talk about the cost of it, actually they're not including all the drugs. I mean, I remember at one point I was on £250 worth of drugs a day. A day. I mean, it was so because I was so much older than the amount of drugs, it was so expensive and so many. But also, I, mean, I remember Professor Robert Winston made this point as a fertility expert. He said he's been in, you know, cancer clinics, he's been in, you know, IVF clinics, and he said if you want to talk about the most miserable, traumatized people, it's it's people in IVF clinics because the the roller coaster, the up and the down, it's it's really very unpleasant experience. That you know, jabbing yourself constantly every day, non-stop. Um, you know, uh, blood tests and, and things like that. It is, it's kind of almost like a full-time job. And I just think so many women are counting on this as a future and the men are happy to go, yeah, yeah, I'll settle down when I feel like it. And actually, a lot of people are looking at how they're having only one child when they would have preferred more, like me, or not having any children at all. And it's not just an economic disaster. It is uh, for the country. It, it is, it is a, it's a, it's a, just a personal disaster for people because say, having exactly. children is one of the greatest joys in life. Well, for many, it, obviously, there are a, a number of people who don't want to, but it is true to say that for the majority, that is correct. And it's also true to say exactly how you pointed there, that even having one child does not necessarily mean that uh, people have reached what the, 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 the reproductive sort of, you know, wants and needs. Yeah. So I do hear quite a lot of people saying, oh, you already have a child, why do you want a second one? Don't be selfish. Yeah. I say that's a little bit, it is quite the smugness of those that have. Yeah. You know, there is no rule to say you're allowed to have one, two or three. It's what you want to have. And I think it's important to also point out there when people think about IVF, is a lot of the times uh, people think about that first sort of child. But of course, if they want to have a larger family, then it goes without saying that you have to start younger and yeah. earlier you try to achieve that sort yeah. of uh, family size that you uh, want yeah. again that's part of education that is uh, required and when it comes down to obviously funding and, and cost what's also quite sad is that the proportion of uh, a, a funded sort of uh, on the NHS IVF cycle has gone down with time. So while it used to be 35 percent, so about a third of all cycles in 2019 uh, were funded by the National Health Service, that's now dropped to 27 percent. Yeah. So again, but, it, it, can it, see one way it, this going? It's a huge, it's a huge. I mean, it's, it's a huge cost. It's a huge emotional drain. And again, it's just. But there's a you know have, having sex and unprotected sex earlier in life would would be a simpler solution. Uh, Dr. Hippocrates Saris, really good to talk to you. He's consultant in reproductive medicine. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Philip Ingram, what do you make of this? Well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm torn on it. You know, as a woman, you have to take lots of drugs. You've just criticised taking drugs for... I'm oh, sorry, fat, to have fat, baby fat, as opposed, fat, to, as but, opposed but, to fat but, jobs, but which fat you don't loss. need. But the drugs have side effects. Um, yeah, it's, allowing parents, it's allowing parents to be older. We're seeing a surge in children with ADHD and autism and various other bits and pieces. Is there a link? There's so much more we need to know about this. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's why I'm just not entirely sure. I mean, I want everyone who wants a kid to be who can afford to have a kid to be able to have a kid. But I'm thinking we need to be giving people the right advice. Yep. And the right advice is you need to be you need to be having children younger. But we need to make that possible yep. for so many couples who do want kids.